ready for true happiness, for deep fulfillment, for feeling alive, on purpose, and in control of your life again, it's time to be the bold, brilliant, beautiful woman you were born to be. Welcome to the Purpose Girl Podcast. I'm women's happiness and life purpose expert, Karen Rockhind, and I'm going to teach you how to live on purpose, feel alive, and be happy in every aspect of life. I'm going to get real about my life and interview women who are living on purpose so that you can finally live yours. Welcome to the show. Hello, 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 love. As we come to an end of the year, it is a perfect time to pause and look back and ask yourself, what are you super proud of this year? What did you achieve or what did you accomplish that you are just so proud of? Now, when I ask most women this question, I'll either get a deer in headlights or I'll hear about all the things that they're not proud of, right? You might tell me, I didn't do anything that special this year, or you really well know all the things that you didn't do, but you meant to, right? You meant to start your book, or you meant to lose 10 pounds, or you should have done something extraordinary. Or maybe you're like so many women I talk to, and the thing that you are most proud of is your kids, which I love. If you've been listening to the Purpose Girl podcast for a while, then you know that I want kids. However, we can't, as women stand as being proud of our kids as our biggest achievement. So you know that I want you to be proud of your kids and that is amazing because I want kids that I'm proud of. But what I'm really curious about is what did you achieve? So if the thing that you're most proud of is your kids, then I want to know what it is that you did that made your kids so extraordinary. I want to know what it is that you taught them that led to whatever it is that you're proud of them for. The thing is that as women, We have to be the ones who are touting our own achievements. We have to be the one who's kind of out there bragging. No one is going to do it for us. And so today on the Purpose Girl podcast, we are talking about the big A. We are talking about achievement. We're going to talk about how you can actually achieve all that you desire to, all that you want to. We're going to talk about what science says in terms of how to make changes in your life, in terms of how to actually not only have goals, but to take steps toward them and realize them. We're going to talk about why achievement is a critical pathway to success. So you're going to want to stay until the end of the episode so that you can get purpose power tips that you can write in your journal and you can take action on your dreams now. This episode continues a six-part series in which I've been taking you through the six different major pathways to happiness, right? It's called PERMA-V. Of course, the first one was P, positivity, all about having more positive emotions, the negative emotions, how your brain works, the E for engagement, using your strengths, having activities that make you lose track of time that you get into flow with, the R for relationships, and I gave you all the tools and what the science says about how to have the thriving, happy, healthy relationships that you want. M, of course, for meaning and purpose, where I even read you a piece of the book that I've been working on. And today is all about achievement. So even if you weren't able to think of something, of what you're most proud of from this year, I want you to look back at your life. And I want you to feel into that feeling of being proud. Now, this is a feeling that a lot of us as women were told that we are not supposed to have, right? That it's not attractive or it's not cute or nice girls don't brag or don't talk about yourself. One of my clients grew up with her father as a minister in a really small town. And when she came home one year with all A's and being number one in her class, her father sat her down and actually told her that she can't do that, that she needs to be humble. And so she learned, I should actually shrink. I should make myself small. And I see so many of us as women do this. And then I also see the opposite end where we are so achievement driven, right? We've grown up in this very kind of over masculinized world of being all about achievement. Get the A, get the A, A plus, A plus, A plus. And you're on this trajectory your whole life, right? So in school, you were trying to get the A plus, then you were trying to get into the right college, then you were trying to get the right job, and then you're trying to get the promotion, and then you're trying to get the next promotion, then you're trying to get the house, then you're trying to get the partner, then you're trying to get the kids. And it's like this nonstop treadmill of achievement that we're just on without ever stepping back and saying, is all this achievement making me happy? And achievement feels good. And we do this because we're told that all of these achievements will make us happy. 
that if we just do all of these things on this grand list that the world gives us, then we'll finally be happy. And how many people do you know, either yourself or other people, who have now checked off all these boxes and they're still feeling unhappy? So what we want to talk about today on the Purpose Girl podcast is how to achieve the things that will actually make you happy. I remember toward the end of my corporate career when I was a vice president of marketing, making a nice, healthy six-figure salary. I had even been given a big award in Greater Cleveland. It was called a Rainmaker Award for women who were doing big things. And it looked from the outside like I was so successful. It looked like I had achieved so much. And I had. I had achieved a lot. But people would say, you're so successful. And yet inside, I felt like a big fat loser. I felt like a failure. Because I knew that I wanted to be doing this work with you. I wanted to have a radio show, a broadcast where I could be inspiring you. I wanted to be speaking on stages like I do at companies like Capital One and Progressive and at women's conferences to empower women to go for their dreams. I wanted to be working on books. I wanted to be a coach. I wanted to work with women one-on-one to really know who they are and love who they are. So even though it seemed like I was successful, I wasn't accomplishing the dreams of my heart. And as you may know, if you've listened to the Purpose Girl podcast for a while, what actually got me to finally start pursuing the dreams of my heart was being robbed at gunpoint. It was having a gun to my head. And I do this work so that you don't have to have a gun to your head in order to start pursuing the dreams that will actually make you feel that sense of pride and will make you feel happy. It feels so good to achieve It's interesting, there is debate in the positive psychology world whether or not achievement should be one of the major pathways to happiness, whether we should talk about it, because achievement makes so many people unhappy. When you're on that treadmill and you're just trying to achieve and achieve and overachieve what everybody else wants you to, that actually leads to more unhappiness. But Marty Seligman, who was the kind of father of positive psychology, the the founder, the researcher who put the name onto this field of well-being, the science of happiness. Ultimately, he decided that it needed to be included because achievement does lead to greater well-being. People who have that sense of pride, who are going for their dreams, who feel like they have done, does give you happiness. The key here is that you are going for the dreams. You are achieving the things that are in your heart and soul, not just what you think will make you happier, what other people have told you to do. So I know this feeling of achievement so well. I've been basking in it lately because I've wanted to have a store for a while, a store where women could get products that lifted them up, that started their day right, that made you feel excited and happy and proud and really helps you with your happiness. And I'm so excited. I just launched it. It's called the Happy Woman Shop and you can go to happywomanshop.com and I've been wanting to do a couple of things. One, I've wanted to have like a signature necklace that we all wore as a big sisterhood around the world and um, so we created this beautiful necklace that is a gold drop and it says I choose on it. And the idea if you get this for yourself or someone else as a gift is every time you put it on, you think to yourself, what do I really need today? So maybe you need love. Maybe you need peace. Maybe you need time to breathe or to connect or you need joy and play. So you put on the necklace and then all throughout the day when you're triggered or it seems like you're getting off track, all you have to do is touch it and it says, I choose. And it's a reminder of what you need that day. It's so beautiful. You have to check it out. The other thing I'm super proud of is I'm someone who loves like oracle and mantra cards. I love starting my day and I've got all these different decks of cards where you kind of close your eyes and you pick a card and that card gives you guidance for the day. And I've been wanting to write one of these decks for a while. And I thought, well, who am I to write a deck? You know, I'm not an astrologer or an oracle, but I, I am someone who knows what women need to be happier. So I'm super proud to have created the first happy woman mantra deck. So ultimately, I understand why achievement is considered one of the pathways to happiness because it feels good. It feels good. And if you take the flip, it actually feels so poopy when you desire something. Maybe you've been wanting to run a 10K. Maybe you've been wanting to start a bake shop. Maybe you've been wanting to write a book or write a song. And if you've been stopping yourself, for a few months, for even a few years, for your whole life, 
it feels crappy. You feel bad about yourself no matter how much else you have achieved. You know that when you hold yourself back, it feels bad. So as we talk about achievement today, we are talking about you getting to the heart of those goals that actually will light up your soul. Those goals that actually are aligned with your heart. That even if you don't become the most successful baker on earth or the most you know, well-known songwriter on earth, you will feel so proud of yourself that you did it. That's the kind of goal I'm talking about. And the reason that this is important is because research is super clear about our motivation really mattering in terms of whether or not we achieve. So researchers have identified that there are kind of two ways that you can be motivated. One is intrinsic motivation and one is extrinsic motivation. So extrinsic motivation is when you are motivated by some sort of external reward, right? Maybe you worked on your homework when you were a kid because the teacher told you you had to or your parents were kind of breathing down your neck. Maybe now you're staying in a job that you don't love because the payment is something you feel like you need. Or you've got a partner that you're afraid to tell that you really want to leave that job. I have a client right now who's wanted to leave her job for like three years. And she's so afraid that her partner will be upset with her for wanting to leave it. So there's this extrinsic motivation. What the research shows is that extrinsic motivation, it's kind of like that carrot and stick, right? Extrinsic motivation can work in terms of motivating you to do something because you'll feel guilty if you don't, or you feel like you have a responsibility, but it's never going to be as effective as intrinsic motivation because intrinsic motivation is something that you do just because you love it. It's something that you feel called to pursue. And you know you feel called to pursue something if you get an idea and it doesn't go away. I cannot tell you how many times this has happened in my own life and in my clients' lives and friends' lives where you have an idea, you know, something tells you to write that song. And you think, well, who am I to write be a songwriter? You know, maybe you think I can't even carry a tune. And so you ignore it. But it doesn't go away. This actually happened with me with living in New York City. For so long, I wanted to live in New York City. I thought, well, this is stupid. I've got so much more space in the Midwest where I was living. Who wants a teeny tiny apartment? And I would convince myself that what I really desired was stupid or unnecessary. In reality, I was just afraid. But it was intrinsic to me to live in New York City. And one of the achievements I'm so proud of from this year is that I made it happen. So Josh and I live in a really nice big house in Philadelphia because he has a son and that's part of our agreement as we live there until his son graduates high school. But I have had this intrinsic knowing that I'm meant to be in the city, that this is where I get my energy. And so this year I made it happen with us getting another apartment. In fact, I'm taping from there today so you may hear some background noises that you don't usually hear. And it feels so good. So you often know that something is intrinsic if it doesn't go away. And especially if you're telling yourself, well, that's stupid. Why, who do I think I am? I don't need that. Those are the dreams. Those are the goals that actually you need most. Because when you pursue one of those goals, you are so much more motivated and determined in every other area of life. So then the question is, how do you start making some of those things happen? Well, the first aspect is to take a look at, do you believe that you can achieve what it is that you desire? How hopeful are you? So what we know from the research is that hope matters. Think about it. If you feel totally hopeless about starting your own business, you think, oh, I'll never make as much money or it won't be lucrative for us or I can't do it or nobody will want to hire me, then you're just never going to pursue it. So what hope does is hope actually ignites your goals into action. And I did a podcast episode specifically about hope and optimism, so you may want to go back and listen to that. But very quickly, what hope does is hope actually gets your brain thinking of strategies to realize the dream, to realize the goal. It also makes you motivated because the minute that you have even a tiny kernel of hope that you can be a songwriter or that you can even just write a song, whether you're a songwriter or not, then your brain starts thinking of, hmm, well, how can I do it? Well, who do I know who can help me? Could I look up a class online? Is there a master class about it? But the minute you lose hope, you actually stop finding pathways forward. So it's super important that you start paying attention to your language around your goals. Are you talking about your goals as though they are possible? Are you talking about your goals as though you can do them? 
That is a number one key. And what's interesting is my biggest goal and biggest desire right now is to be a mom. So I've been reading this book by a hypnotherapist, Marissa Peer, all about how our language affects our goals. And this book is specific to pregnancy, but she works in all different ways and has books about other kinds of goals. And she asks you to take a look at what language are you using? Are you saying to yourself, or have you ever said to yourself, even when you were 15 years old, I don't want to be a mom? Or you said to yourself, oh, I'm afraid I'm going to get pregnant. Well, some of that gets logged into our brain. It's like stuck there. And you might recognize this because if you've said to yourself when you were a kid, oh, I'm fat, and that thought never goes away. So getting clear on what is the language that you're using, right? So reading this book, I'm like, oh my God, how many different things do I say or have I said about I'm getting old, my eggs are dying, my eggs are old, right? So all those kinds of things are actually just shutting off the ability for my brain and my body to work toward this goal that I have. Instead of thinking, wait, Lots of women get pregnant at 44. Wait, lots of women are able to have babies at 47, 48. Instead of thinking, wait, what are the other possibilities? So reading this book, I've been really into thinking of the different possibilities. And it's all about having belief and having hope again. So having hope again, I started to look at my nutrition and actually started to look at my vitamins. And you've heard me talk for the last few weeks about ritual vitamins. And in all full disclosure, they were sponsoring this podcast. So they had paid me a little bit for me to try ritual, see if I liked it. And I did. And so I started talking about it on the podcast. And what has happened is I love them so much that I actually now pay them because I love these vitamins. And I have switched now to their prenatal. And for any of you who are thinking about trying to have a baby or expecting a baby, Ritual's essential prenatals are conceived specifically for what we need. Because so many women, whether you want to have a baby or not, most women are taking vitamins that are filled with with stuff you don't need. And one of those, in fact, is folic acid. And most women cannot process folic acid. And so instead, we need folate. And that's why I'm so into these vitamins. And what Ritual does is it basically fills in the gaps for a women's diet, right? From D3 to omega-3. And what's great is they taste awesome. So the regular Ritual vitamins taste like mint and the prenatals taste like lemon. And now they get delivered to me. So it's only a dollar a day and it's amazing. And I can tell the difference in my body and I love, love, love them. So whether you are living your life or you want to have a baby, either way, check into Ritual Vitamins. They're so good. Visit ritual.com forward slash purpose girl. Again, ritual.com forward slash purpose girl. Check it out. Let me know how you love them too. So one of the things I've had to realize, whether it's my goal of having a baby or it's my goal of writing a book or it's my goal of having the store, is that I had to really come to adapt what we know about how people make changes. So when you have a goal, you actually have to realize how the change process works. So we're coming up to New Year's Eve and so many people are going to try to have a New Year's resolution, right? And unfortunately, the research shows that about 92% of all New Year's resolutions fail. And the reason that they fail is think about it like you're drinking a lot of wine or eating a lot of food throughout Christmas and Hanukkah and New Year's Eve. And then all of a sudden on January 1st, suddenly you think like, oh, I'm not going to have any more alcohol. I'm not going to have any more food. But it's all sitting in the house. right? We don't do a very good job of planning for the changes that we want to make. We also don't do a very good job of realizing that with every change we want to make, it's three steps forward and one step back. Sometimes it's three steps forward and two steps back. Sometimes it's three steps forward and four steps back. And often that step back is when we give up. I've seen this so many times, right, where it's like you think, okay, today I'm going to be really healthy. And then at 11 o'clock when someone brings in donuts and you're starving, you have a donut and you go, see, I knew I couldn't diet. I knew it didn't work for me. Well, what you're doing there is back to the language, right? You're telling yourself that you're not capable of it. Rather, what we know, it's called Prochaska's theory of change. And what we know is that we have to plan for change. So when you have the idea of a goal that you want to pursue or change that you want to make, most people then go right into action, right, if you're going to do it at all. But in in the middle of that is planning. So actually have your house prepared with healthy foods that will support your action. Tell everybody you know, this is what I'm doing. And so that when you go out to eat with friends, you're going to a restaurant that supports the healthy foods that you want to make and plan for failure. What we need to do is recognize that we will probably fail at some point along the way. Something won't work. And even if it's not of your own volition, something doesn't work towards your goal. And that's when most people say, see, forget it. I knew I couldn't do it. Or see, it's impossible. 
What I want you to realize about achievement is that you're going to have failure. I saw a great video of the basketball player, Michael Jordan, talking about how he failed to make the winning shot 26 times in his career. 26 times, people had counted on him to make the winning shot of game and he had failed. Now, if he had let any one of those times trip up his head and that he didn't get back on the court, he never would have been the great that we know him as. We don't remember him by the times that he failed. We remember him by all of his achievement. So realistically, we're going to make quote unquote mistakes. And all that means is that you do a retake. So the key is if you fall off the wagon, then you just get back up. The other thing that's so important, any goal you have, we often think of it, it's too big, right? Like one of the things I really felt like I needed in order to pursue this career, I felt like I had no discipline, right? So this is years ago, about 10 years ago, I was walking with a girlfriend of mine and she was talking about how she had just finished a marathon. And she said what it gave her the most was discipline. I said, okay, I'm going to do it because I needed that. Now, anyone who looked at my life would have thought I had a ton of discipline because of my career and my life at the time. But like I said, I knew that I really wanted to pursue this career. So as soon as she said that running a marathon gave her discipline, I signed up for one and it was six months later. So I wake up the next morning and I decide I'm going to run one mile. Well, oh my goodness, girlfriend, I am running that mile and I'm huffing and puffing and like coughing and like it just is like not fun, right? And at the end, I'm thinking, oh my God, I cannot do this. And then the next day I woke up and you know how much I ran? One mile again. In fact, I ran one mile every day for 10 days until it was comfortable and easy for me. And then on day 11, I woke up and guess how much I ran? One and a half miles. So most people, when I ask that question, they think I jumped to two. No, when you are not a runner going from one to two, that's double. That's a lot. So I did one and a half until I was comfortable with it. Then I went up to two, then two and a half, then three. Then once I was able to do three miles, then I went to four five, six. Once I got to six comfortably, then I felt comfortable jumping to six to eight, eight to 10. The key is, is that our goal seems so big. You think you want to write a book and it's like, oh my God, if you've ever sat down to write a book, it is, I mean, it's just like, I have probably 3000 pages that have all kind of in some way be part of the first book I want to write because you have so many ideas and it's so big and how do you organize it? Or if you think you want to open a bakery and then you think, well, I don't know how to get suppliers. I don't know how to get real estate. I don't know how to do any. It seems too big. So what we need to do is we actually need to be able to take all of our goals and break them down just like I did with the marathon. And by doing it the way I did, I was able to run a full marathon, 26.2 miles in six months. Six months. I'm super proud. I ran that marathon in five hours, 42 minutes and 50 seconds. Super, super, super proud. And I didn't walk at all. I ran. So the key is, is that you are able to break down whatever you're doing. So a lot of times people think about a goal and maybe you've heard of something called a smart goal. This is when a goal is specific, measurable, you're accountable for it, it's realistic, and it's time bound, right? So you know you achieved it or you didn't. You know this is actually achievable. This is actually realistic, right? You can measure it. You measure your success in it. And that's like a pretty common term in goal setting. One of the things I do is I teach in something called the Certificate in Applied Positive Psychology program. And we like to talk there about SMART plus goals. And the plus is knowing what else leads to goal achievement. And so one of the extra things that leads to goal achievement is that you're able to break it down into the smallest, smallest, smallest bit. So take, for instance, opening a bakery. The smallest bit may be to research flour or the smallest bit maybe to go talk to the corner baker about how they opened. The smallest, smallest, smallest bit is what you want to start with. You want to ask yourself with your goal, what is the equivalent of what one mile was to me with my marathon? And then you want to set yourself up with additional tools. So one of my favorite tools is called a primer. So a primer is when you have any sort of visual element around you at all times that reminds you of your goal. One of my favorite ways to do this is with sticky notes. So if you open my closet door at home, I've got all of my goals on sticky notes, right? So I've got a sticky note that says, I am a mom to a healthy, happy baby girl. I have a sticky note that says TEDx talk. I have a sticky note that says, Josh and I love owning our winery in California. And what you'll notice about each of those sticky notes is that they are in the present. 
They're in the present. So I'm not saying I will do this or I want to do this. I'm training my brain. And the reason that this is so important is that research shows that your brain does not know the difference between what you are thinking about, what you're visualizing, and what is reality. So a research study was done where people looked at a piece of artwork and then they, in a brain scan, they looked at kind of what parts of their brain was bubbling off. And then they did the same thing. They asked them to think about the artwork that they had seen and then in the brain scan again. And what they found is that there was an 88% overlap between what someone thought about and what they actually saw. And a great example of this is if I ask you right now to close your eyes and imagine that I'm handing you a slice of lemon. And imagine bringing that lemon up to your nose. And then imagine that you put that lemon in your mouth and you take a big bite. Now, just telling you that my mouth is starting to water. I'm starting to taste the sour taste, right? So there's no lemon. But your your mouth and my mouth both think that there is a lemon. This is part of also why language is so important. That when you speak, your brain takes words in to the left side of your brain and turns them into pictures in the right side of your brain. Which is why if I say to you, do not think of a pink elephant in a purple tutu on black and white polka dot grass, what are you thinking about, right? Your brain is turning it into a picture, which is why the word not doesn't work with your brain because your brain turned the elephant into a picture. So the brain is very, very, very powerful. And there have been research studies done where they they show how just thinking about something in your brain is actually changing your cells, right? It's changing the makeup of your cells at a cellular level. Another research study took a group of students and some of them, they were told to do hip flexor exercises, right, where they were strengthening their hip muscles. Another group were told to think about doing hip flexor exercises for five minutes a day. Just think about it. And another group, they didn't do anything. There was no, they were the control group. So as expected, the group that did the hip flexor exercises on the machines, they did increase muscle strength. In fact, they increased it by 28%. The group that did nothing, of course, they didn't increase their muscle strength at all. What's fascinating is that the group that just visualized doing the hip flexor exercises for five minutes a day, just visualizing, had a 24% increase, almost the same as the people who actually did it. Now, this is not me telling you that you should just like think about exercise and you suddenly will get healthy, right? What will happen is you, you will start convincing your brain that you're doing it, right? You do then need to take action, but this is just to show you how powerful visualization is, which is why I love primers. The primers of having the sticky notes all over your house that remind you of your dreams. Or some people like to set alarms on their phone and the alarm goes off and you say a mantra. It's why in the Happy Woman Shop, my partner and I made the mantra deck. Because if you have the mantra at the beginning of the day around self-love or you have the mantra around play, then you will remember that throughout the day. It's a primer. Same thing with the necklace. If you're wearing a necklace that says, I choose, then throughout the day when you feel like a victim to your boss or to your kids or to a partner, or you feel like life is controlling you instead of you controlling it, you have a primer all day long that says, I choose. It's a reminder that you are in control. So it's super important that you, whatever your goals are, you create primers. So that's why some people like to have a vision board that you think about what it is that you actually want in life and you turn those into visuals that you put all over. And then, of course, if and when you fail, and I should say when, because it's inevitable. Do you know how many times I have failed at this career? The first time that I had a group coaching program that I announced one, you know how many people signed up? Zero, zero people signed up. And I just went to bed and I put the pillows over my head. I was so embarrassed. I was humiliated. Now, of course, no one out there knew that I didn't sign anyone up. As far as they knew, I was going ahead with the program. But I was so embarrassed. I said to myself, I knew I couldn't do it. I can't do it. I'm a failure. And then, of course, I had to get up. I had to, just like Chumba Wumba says, I had to, you know, we get knocked down and we get up again, dust myself off. So I tried to do it again months later. You know how many people signed up to the second time? zero again, right? And again, now I'm so humiliated. I'm definitely thinking I can never do this. I'm a total failure. No one is ever going to want to work with me. I'm, I'm a jerk, all that kind of stuff. And then I had to dust myself off, right? So another piece of pursuing a goal that actually lights you up, that actually is part of your heart and soul, your calling, is that there's purpose to it. Right, Something that keeps us on track toward our goals is that there's a bigger reason. And my bigger reason is wanting to empower every single woman alive to know who she is, know what her dreams are, and go for them. So I tried a third time with the group program. And then three women signed up. 
right? Where now I run my annual empowered group, which is 10 women. And it's 10 women who all come together in a sisterhood and support one another. And they learn from me all the tools in order to live your most empowered life. You learn what your purpose is, what your strengths are. You learn how to use visualization and goal setting. And the best part is you do it in sisterhood. And these women become sisters and support for each other for life. And I'm super excited. I actually decided that early in 2019, I'm going to be starting another Empowered group. So if that is of interest to you, then please email me, go on purposegirl.com, email me, and we will talk about if it's right for you. Because that kind of group is the last piece I want to leave with you. That the way that we best achieve our goals is that we have some sort of support. The number one thing that actually made me run that marathon is that I asked my friend Nina at work who had run 10 marathons, hey, can you help me out with this? And she was so excited. She actually gave me her training schedule and we would run together at lunch. And I think she loved it because then she had a running buddy at lunch and I loved it because it kept me on schedule. And she literally became my like coach, right? So I had a coach, someone who had done it, someone who had been there, someone who had success with it, who knew what she was doing and she was with me every step of the way. And this is a huge aspect, right? When you go climb, if you were to climb Mount Everest, you have a Sherpa with you. Like we have to have a guide. We have to have support, which is why no matter what it is, if it's the bakery, then go find a baker who can support you. If it's that you don't know your purpose, find someone who has found their purpose and can help you do the same. Like we have to have support, which is why I love doing group programs because then you have a support group who is really cheering you on and who is there when you fail to say, get back up, you can do it. My last empowered group, it's been amazing. They graduated almost a year ago and it's been amazing to see the changes that they've made. One of them turned 40 this year and made had made a list at the beginning of the program of her 40, like her 40 things on her bucket list. And it's been so fun. She came back to the group lately and said, okay, I'm done with my bucket list. Time to write another one. Another woman was in an abusive relationship. And throughout the four months of empowered of the program, we were all supporting her and loving her. And I'm so thrilled to say that just recently, just recently, she was able to leave him, right? So what is possible, every dream, every goal is possible when you have the support because you will fail, right? We all need, Angela Duckworth is an incredible researcher and she's written a book called Grit. We all need grit, which is having passion and perseverance to keep going because we will fail. Inevitably, we will fall off the wagon. But when we have support, support of a coach, support of a group that's going through the same thing as you, support of friends, support, we're able to keep going. And this is how we actually achieve every goal of our hearts. I never would be sitting here doing this work with you if I had not had a coach. I was still stuck in fear. I had a great corporate job. I loved the people I work with. I love what I did. But I had a knowing that I wanted to do this. And a friend of mine was working with a coach. She said, you need to work with him. So I called him up and he told me what he charged. And I fell off my chair. I'm like, no way, you're crazy. And then I started thinking about it. Well, what I'm doing isn't working, right? It's like, no change, no change. Have you heard that quote? I love that. If if you don't make any changes, you're not going to have any change, right? So I said, okay, what I'm doing, reading all these self-help books, you know, what I'm doing is not working to actually get the goals that I want done. So I started working with him and within the first few sessions, I mean, I was just bawling my eyes out because he helped me realize my strengths and really clarify my goals and really put them on paper and start taking steps forward. It is the most important thing you can do to have support around the goals and achievements that you desire around what is true for you. So as you think about what it is that you want in the next coming year, This is what I want you thinking about. Here are your purpose power tips. Number one, I want you to take a look at what is it that you truly, 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 truly desire. So goals are awesome, right? Goals, there's a start, there's an end, but it's awesome of the head. Like I've got to achieve this and you know you need to do it by a certain date. What I want you to look at are what do you desire in your heart? Desires are the feminine of the goal, right? And we all have masculine and feminine in us. In fact, you will much better achieve your goals if they come from a true desire. And a desire is something that would light you up, that just fills you with juice and with joy. You might find a desire because you're so jealous of someone else and what they do, or you regret something you never did. These are the things that get you all like excited, even a little bit nervous, 
right? Because it's like, oh my gosh, I want that so much. So really getting in touch with your desires, what is intrinsic to you. Number two, look at the language that you're using with it. Are you saying it's impossible? Are you calling yourself foolish? Are you believing that it's hopeless? And really start to look at that language and make an intentional effort to shift it. And just anytime you hear yourself say the old language, this is useless, it's hopeless, I can't do it. You just cancel it out and you shift it, right? So in this purpose power tip, you actually now a piece of paper, write down all the things that you're thinking are not possible about this dream, about this desire, about this goal, and shift it into the positive of what is possible. Number three, you want to plan. What are all the ways that you can plan for success, including planning for failure? Number four, you're going to break it down into small, small, small steps. And number five, what support do you need to get this achievement that you so deserve? Either what group can support you, what person can support you, who's been there. These are the building blocks of having the kind of achievement, of feeling proud of yourself, of feeling lit up. This store that I just launched, you know, I've wanted to do it for so long and I wasn't doing it on my own. But a client of mine who's been to a couple of my retreats and did my empowered group, she and I just for fun started talking about how wearing t-shirts that have fun like sayings and phrases on it make you feel great. And then she and I started working on this shop together. And she's got all this expertise in how to do the design as well as how to do the online business aspect. And then I've got the expertise in the science of happiness and in the mantras. And so I realized I didn't have to do it alone. I can do it with her. And she's amazing. Shout out to Elizabeth Weber. Shout out, shout out. So allow yourself to get the support that you need. Like who cares that I'm not keeping all the money from the shop for myself? I didn't want to anyway. Right? Rather, I'd rather be working with someone amazing. It's more fun and it actually made it happen. So follow these steps. And if I can be of help to you at all, please reach out to me. I am offering five different women a one half hour free coaching session at the end of the year to start clarifying your goals for next year and start getting you on that path. So you want to be sure that you get in touch with me. Go to my website, purposegirl.com. Go to the contact page. Tell me that you want a free half hour session and why you want it. And I am going to be super excited to support you. It's my holiday gift to you. And with that, I hope that you loved this episode of the Purpose Girl podcast. If you did, please, please, please give it five stars subscribe to it, download it, rate it, tell me, email me, tell me how much you loved it, Karen at KarenRockine.com. Also, the best thing you can do is to share this podcast with your friends. Who do you know, You're the women in your life, your friends, your sisters, your mother, who do you know who has a goal or who just feels like they're not proud of their life and they could use this sense of achievement? Share it with them because that's what we're doing. We are changing the world one woman at a time. A great way to download it or to share it is to go to Apple Podcasts or whatever podcast provider you use, and then please share it along. And please join the Global Sisterhood. Go to Facebook, the Purpose Girls Group. Every week we post a Motivational Monday on there for you to get some inspiration. I think I'm going to start doing some Facebook Lives in there. I want to be building a sisterhood of women around the world who are supporting one another in going for their dreams and loving themselves. And of course, you can find me on Facebook, Coach Karen Rockhind. You can find me on Instagram, Karen Rockhind. Of course, that's spelled C-A-R-I-N-R-O-C-K-I-N-D. And if you're not subscribed to my newsletter, you definitely want to be there because that's where you'll find out about the new retreats I'm doing, when I do free coaching giveaways, and any programs that I'm doing, as well as just getting weekly tips from me on how to live your best, happiest life. Go to PurposeGirl.com and sign up there, and you'll also get a free Living on Purpose guide. And as always, the most important thing you can do is to love yourself, to live with purpose, and to love your life. Bye for now.